So last week I made a video about how I bought a rental property in Texas and I had to put a $50,000 down payment. But what I didn't tell you guys is that I actually liquidated my wife's 401k to fund that purchase. And to be honest, the more I learned about real estate investing and the tax benefits especially, the more I started to question whether or not contributing to a 401k was really worth it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Michael. I'm a full-time software engineer in the Bay Area and a part-time real estate investor. And I teach other high income individuals how to invest in real estate to grow their net worth. So in this video, I'm going to cover the main considerations when pulling money out of a 401k, or in this case, your wife's 401k. I am going to preface this by saying that I am not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA. So please do your own due diligence before making these decisions. So let's dive right in. The very first consideration was, can we buy this home with just the cash on hand? Like, do we even need to use the 401k withdrawal? And here's what my thought process was. We were actually in escrow for another property in Sacramento, California, when this Texas property was presented to us. The total entry fee for this Texas property was gonna be $50,000 down, but we were in the middle of escrow for the Sacramento property, and so we were sitting on about $100,000 of cash and we were trying to decide whether or not we should spend $50,000 of it on this Texas property. But with tech layoffs occurring pretty recently, we decided that spending 50K out of our remaining $100,000 was probably too aggressive. We decided that we needed extra reserves in this uncertain economy, and we realized that we didn't need to be that aggressive to reach our financial goals. But then I remembered that my wife had this 401k that had just been sitting around ever since she quit her corporate job. So to answer the first question of, could we buy this home with just the cash on hand? The answer was pretty much no. So now that we determined that we couldn't buy this Texas property with just the cash that we had in reserves, the next thing we considered was, well, if we did liquidate the 401k, could we buy this Texas property and still have enough cash reserves afterwards? And to answer this question, we needed to understand first how much we would actually be getting if we were to withdraw our 401k balance, because obviously there are fees associated with withdrawing the 401k early. And I found out that the answer to all my questions lies in a document called the Summary Plan Description or SPD. Basically, this document is the fine print of your 401k. So all of the conditions and explanations of what you can or cannot do with your 401k, basically, if you have any questions about your 401k, just go to your summary plan description. Okay, you can find it in your brokerage account. Now, at that time, my wife actually had two pre-tax accounts. She had a rollover IRA with an account value of $15,834 and then a 401k account that had $30,443. So here's exactly what happened when we withdrew both of my wife's retirement accounts. First, we just called Fidelity and said, hey, we want to make a withdrawal. And they said, are you sure there's going to be a 10% penalty? And we said, yeah. So they initiated the withdrawal and here's the breakdown of how much money we actually got after the withdrawal. For the rollover IRA, we initially had $15,834 in that account. Fidelity withheld $1,683 for federal and state income tax. And so in total, we received $13,620 into our bank account. For the 401k, we had a balance of $30,443. Fidelity withheld 20% for federal income tax, which is roughly $6,000 and some state income tax. And we received a total of $22,801 into our bank account. Now it's important to note one more thing, the 10% penalty it wasn't applied immediately. The 10% penalty is actually gonna be due in April of 2024, next year, when I file my tax return. So in the meantime, I'm holding on to that money. I just need to make sure that I have enough money to pay those taxes when tax time comes. So in summary, after liquidating the $45,000 total balance, we had about $36,000 in our bank account, and we still owe about $4,500 for that 10%, in April. So with our $36,000, we tacked on another $14,000 of our own cash and we bought the Texas property. Oh, by the way, if you guys haven't watched last week's video on the Texas property that I bought, I did a deal deep dive into showing you guys how I was able to find this property with a 2.75% interest rate and it gets better. The seller also financed back to me $70,000 
for a 0% interest rate for 30 years. So my combined loan mortgage interest rate was about 2.3% on about $430,000 worth of loan. So go check out that video right here. Anyway, so hopefully now you guys understand the realities of pulling money out of your 401k and what penalties and taxes that you need to pay if you were to do that. Now, let me show you exactly why it was such a good decision for us. And this is really getting to the golden nugget of this video. So stay tuned here. Now, the last consideration we had was this. Okay, if we did have an extra $36,000 from our 401k withdrawal and we bought this property, would it be a better investment than the 401k? Well, here's what I think. Number one, the property is gonna cash flow about $300 per month as a long-term rental. Number two, remember, when you pulled money out of the 401k, that's considered a taxable event. It's as if you just received a $45,000 bonus. You're gonna to have to pay taxes on it. By pulling $45,000 out of your 401k, your taxable income is going to increase by $45,000. And that means that if my wife and I made, let's say $400,000 in 2023, instead of reporting to IRS that we made $400,000, now we would have to report that we made $445,000 and we would have to pay more taxes, right? And that's the taxes that you're withholding when you withdraw from your 401k. Well, here's the golden nugget. The Texas property that we bought is going to reduce our taxable income by $100,000. Now, even though my taxable income was raised by $45,000 to 445, because of the Texas property, we're gonna be able to reduce this $445,000 number down to 345, and we're now gonna pay taxes as if we only made 345. And the difference between reporting 445 and 345 is a federal income tax savings of $25,000. So if you were confused by what I just said in the last 20 seconds and you wanna learn more about how we're actually using real estate to offset my W-2 income, then go watch this video right here. So basically, what that means is that we invested $50,000 into this Texas property, but it's saving us $25,000 in federal income tax in 2023. And so in my head, that really means that we're only paying $25,000 to acquire this property. And remember, it's cash flowing $300 per month. So if you do the math, that's a 14% cash on cash return that I can benefit from today, not when I'm 55 years old. And that's not even factoring in any appreciation or the fact that my tenants are paying down approximately $10,000 off of my loan balance every single year. And so that's pretty much it. That's why I don't really invest in the 401k anymore besides getting the employer match. Always get the employer match. That's just free money. Ultimately, it's just a numbers game and the real estate just makes more sense to me. You know, I think the main thing that I'm trying to show you guys here is that the cash flow that I'm collecting here from this rental property, I can use it today and I can reinvest it today, unlike the 401k where you have to wait until you're 55. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, this debate between 401ks and real estate, it's just always ongoing. What did I miss? What other considerations should I have you know, taken into account? Let me know in the comments below. So if you guys found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. I make videos once per week and next week's video is gonna be really, really good. Also, if you guys wanna schedule a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with me, the link is in the description. Go ahead, schedule a call with me. We can talk more about strategies just like this. And that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys have a happy holidays and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.